Hello and welcome to Switzerland Investing Insights brought to you by NAB Trade. And today we're into the penultimate week of reporting season and we've got some star stocks to have a look at, Paul. Yeah, look, the busiest week in the season, Peter, and I guess it's probably a little bit on the disappointing side mm. overall with perhaps more misses than beats. But let's go through some of the majors that have reported this week. Yep. Starting with BHP, look, really no, not too many surprises with BHP, the underlying profit, $5.2 billion, up 39%. Yep. That's really on the back of sounds higher, impressive, it sounds numbers, impressive. high realised prices for iron ore and copper driving the proper increase. Return on capital employed of 19%. That's pretty good. Mm. Uh, I'd be pretty proud of that. The interim dividend, 65 US cents. That's, that's about 98 cents Australian. That's a 63% payout ratio. Now, BHB has two components. They have 50%, which is sort of guaranteed, and, and they add the extra depending on their cash flow. They're able to increase to 63%. And importantly, they maintain guidance on production, capex, and the delivery of major projects. Going to some of the highlights, I guess it's all about cash flow. They're spending off $3.7 billion Pretty US good. in cash. A lot of discipline about how they're spending it. Their projects are tracking well, and in the next uh, 12 months, two major projects are going to come on stream. That's an expansion of, the, of their copper facilities in, in Chile and also petroleum in the Gulf of Mexico. And probably a, a bit of a surprise for me, uh, some good underlying performance and cost. That was probably the real positive mm -hmm. out of the result. The negatives, Peter, is that despite all the investment, production is still pretty flat. Mm -hmm. And we haven't seen any growth in production out of uh, the Pilbara. And, uh, you know, I think, I think that's one of the challenges with these mining companies is how to actually increase the, uh, the production. Yeah, so it's been all price. Let's go to Coles, Paul. Yeah, look, Coles was probably had been telegraphed before him. They came out a couple of weeks ago. Some positives here, the sales revenue up 3.3%, uh, and the EBIT was just a little bit higher at $725 million, only up 0.4%. Um, a maiden dividend of 30 cents per share, fully frank. That's bad as it, on expectations, but this is their first report as a separately list, listed business. Um, Improving momentum in the supermarkets business, Peter, with comparable store sales picking up in the second quarter, up 3.6%, and uh, EBIT, which of course earnings for interest and tax, up 5.7%. The challenge with Coles is still in their liquor business, mm. uh, earnings for interest and tax down 10%, so some, some challenges there with that business. Uh, and then interesting after the result, uh, Peter, West Farmers, who of course Coles was spun off from West Farmers, uh, West Farmers kept a 15% stake. Uh, West Farm Farmers sold 4.9% stake at $16.08, and some speculation they'll get rid of the remaining 10%. Mm. Uh, so uh, that perhaps leads us on, on to the West Farmers result. Yep. Of course, Coles was, was a big driver in the old West Farmers profit. Now it's just about Bunnings. And look, this is a bit of a mixed result, Peter. Um, the market actually liked it for other reasons, but uh, let's come to that in a sec. Yeah. Uh, actually, the adjusted earnings was, was down um, about 0.5%, despite a small pickup in, in, in profit. Interim dividend of 75 cents. Now, on paper, that's down from a dollar, but the dollar before included the coals. So they got rid of coals. If you're a West Farmer shareholder and you kept your coal shares, effectively your total dividend is, is 75 cents from West Farmers and 30 cents from coals, yep. 105 versus what you got previously yeah. before for a dollar. So actually, a small dividend increase in aggregate. Strong performance from Bunnings, and this is uh, just powers along Bunnings. Uh, you just wonder how much longer Bunnings can grow. <laughs> um, is there any limit? To who's, it, who's its rival, Paul? Who's its rival? And of no. course, we we weren't able to Bunnings the UK, so no, right. it is limited to, to Australia. Uh, it's almost sixty percent of the whole conglomerate, is, mm. is, and that just shows you the strength of Bunnings. Officeworks also did really well. Remember, Officeworks was a division they wanted to, to yeah. out a little while now, ago. The, the, the leadership they have turned that business around. They really done a great job. Um, Kmart earnings down ten percent, and this is the disappointing part. Yeah. That includes a provision for sort of payroll remediation, but even putting that to one side, it was still down about seven and a half percent. Target is still a basket case, Can't and there's really around, no signs of, of what, how of Target's picking up. West Farmers are saying it's profitable. I'm not sure. We don't yeah. disclose separate figures yeah. about that. Also, some challenges with their industrials and safety business, particularly that's the, a group that manages workwear. Uh, profit was down there. So, look, West Farmers, I'd say price close to perfection. It's on an earnings multiple of 28 times. Uh, it went up probably because following the coal sale of 4.9% of the market saying, well, that's a billion dollars of cash. What are you going to do with that? Yeah, yeah. You've still got 10% you could sell. Coal's a $16. You know, you, it was, when it came on, it was around about $12. That's another $2 billion of cash you could get rid of. 
some expectations of, of a capital return. So yeah. uh, that's funny the way the market does. It's not always the result, it's sometimes other things yeah, that yeah. get the What might excited. happen. Yep. All right, let's go to the next one, Paul. Look, uh, Medibank, uh, this uh, again is going to come as a bit of a shock to people. I think it's, some of it had been telegraphed, but, but operating profit down almost 21% to $219 no, good sign, million. Dollars. And this is despite a small revenue increase with premium growth, um, this is all about health insurance claims. So they've sort of ballooned out to 20.4% uh, of growth of, of claims. Yeah. Uh, not much Medibank can do about that, but uh, obviously they're working hard, but that's a, probably a bigger increase than the market expected. Now the issue here is, the, is partly the dividend. Um, it's been maintained at 5.7 cents a share, but that represents a payout ratio of 88%. And that's above Medibank's target of between 75% and 85%. So, you yeah, know, there's some top. issues around the dividend. Mm. Positive, uh, if there are a couple of positives from the results, there was a net increase in policyholders. Now, that's still in the AHM brand. That's like their sort of, um, the, 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 Jetstar. the Jetstar brand. The main Medibank private well, they brand, make most, yep, of the money. Is, make most of the money, is still losing policyholders. Now, Medibank says that's close to stabilising, will stabilise in the second half. They were able to increase their management expenses. That's of course, that's not the insurance claims, that's the bit that goes into marketing, promotion and ad admin. Now they do expect a better second half for health insurance earnings. And they've all also telegraphed that the dividend payout will be at the top of the range, about 85%. But there's still gonna be some pressure on the final dividend. And just to explain the final dividend last year, it was actually uh, over, it was 9.9 uh, nine cents last year, included the two and a half cents special. We won't see that. The question is whether the 7.4% ordinary can be maintained. I think there's still, the pressure, isn't it? still some pressure on that. Yeah. So look, don't be surprised if people start to say a dividend cut at Medibank uh, mm. could be on the card. So I think just an important thing to draw out. A lot of us hold these stocks. Um, are any of these a buy at this point in time, Paul? Look, I hasten to say probably not. I think BHP's got to be a whole new portfolio. Yeah, yeah. No one is good at predicting commodity prices, mm. including BHP, including yeah. the analysts. It's a well-run company. It's yeah. got lots of cash, not doing anything silly. So I think BHP. West Farmers and Coles, I think they're pretty well towards the top of their range. Yeah. Uh, Medibank, look at low levels. Look, it's, it's still yielding close to 4%. It's pretty solid. Um, you know, I think if the market was to say you were a bit of pressure here, you know, get back into the, the mid twos, you'd have to say add to the portfolio. But I really can't get into my heart to sort of want to buy any of these companies at the moment. But I'm sorry about that. Uh, but it's just the way it is. That's exactly the way it is. That's Switzer Investing Insights brought to you by Nab Trade. Thanks for joining us.